All right. Yeah, I didn't want to do this, but yeah, I, I had to do this one because it's kind of related to the other ones uh, with the Umar Johnson, all this craziness. Now I'm going to talk about the Tariq Nasheed uh, angle. Now what this man is doing, because he's just like Umar Johnson, we all know these, these social media beefs are all related. It's all uh, theater to get people's hits up and all that kind of stuff. But the Umar Johnson thing, I guess some people are like, okay, this man is, is viewed as a fraud and something's about to come out. Uh, Tariq Nasheed already said he knew Umar was a fraud for a long time, but he didn't say anything. So uh, I guess he didn't say anything because he didn't want Umar Johnson to say anything about his fraud. Well, right now, Tariq Nasheed, what he's doing, he's covering his ass right now, trying to uh, take a preemptive strike because... In case Umar Johnson's not able to bounce back. So that's what's going on right now with Tariq Nasheed. Because he's like, fuck this. All this money I ended up getting. This empire I built up. He's like, I'm not having this guy take it away. So that's why he's doing a preemptive strike. And and uh, yeah, I know Umar said what he said. But, you know, it's all a distraction. And I'm going to do one on Boyce Watkins. Because I already called him out a couple of years ago on that TRS show. When the people who call out Umar Johnson, then uh, what they didn't do is they didn't call out uh, Boyce Watkins. They were defending Boyce Watkins because people get fooled by the puppy dog face and, <laughs> and his glasses. So, you know, they, they think, OK, I could trust this guy. So he, he's the I, I kept saying it before. He's the equivalent of what you get on the news. You know, that that innocent face. He can't lie to you. But while money is being made, everybody's lying to you. So Tariq Nasheed, you know, people are ranting and raving about uh, the roasting of Umar Johnson. Uh, if you notice with Tariq Nasheed, yeah, you know, he's more amusing uh, than, than a lot of people, even professional comedians, even though he, that's what he wanted to be was a comedian. So he, I guess he found his gig into uh, fooling black people. And he also uh, took a lot of my material to go against the... Uh, Umar and other people's material that they put against him and uh, Tariq Nasheed even stole one of my lines about the fact that at least Tariq Nasheed gives you a product for, for uh, from begging for the money and Tariq Nasheed made sure he put that in there because he's like yeah that's a good point <laughs> so he put that in there it's a product. Like I said, it's not to help black people. It's for himself. But it's a product. So I can give him that much credit. As opposed to these others who talk and say they want this and they want that. And they're not producing any product. Some damn pillows with a bullshit logo on it. That man, that's not doing it. We need to see the school. Once you get to school. But again, we got to stop talking at school because that's not coming. But if he had the school... Then you can make all the pillows, pens, and whatever the hell else you want to make with it. But right now, it's a phantom school. So, Tariq Nasheed, he goes in with his jokes. The only thing I... Well, there's a few things I don't like about Tariq Nasheed. He says that Umar is an egomaniac, which is no doubt about it. I mean, we all know that the man's ego is way out of control. Uh, worse than Brother Polites, and you know that's a problem. But Tariq has an ego as well, and he has more pressing issues because he doesn't like black people. That's his problem. And, and you know, from coon trains, uh, calling people crispy, and calling people co coons and niggas in front of white people, that's not cool. That's cooned out to the fullest. And um, the buck in the eyes, he, you know, he did that with Umar, but he does that with a lot of black people. Uh... Because he doesn't like black people. You know, he thinks his color is the perfect color. And he didn't want to get any darker, even though he has that darker daughter. And you can see she's nice looking. But then he had to go get a, a half-white woman. I mean, his wife seems like a nice woman. You know, there's something different about her besides being mixed. You know, I, I think he keeps her pregnant, but, you know, to keep her occupied and to keep her with him. You know, some people like him, they like they they need they need the image of a of a good wife with them. So that's what he's all about. But here's the thing. 
both of these guys, all these guys are scam artists. It's just that Tariq Nasheed has, is working with more money. And he's slicker. He has more connections. I mean, he, he keeps talking about his business interests, but the truth is, you know, my man has 50th rate businesses, you know, documentaries that are not even on Blu-ray. But they come on DVD. He keeps saying they get open in theaters. I'm like, I don't know what the hell theaters these are opening in because I've never seen one of his get open in a theater. Unless it was a special rental for the night or something. I don't know. But, um, you know, he sells a whole bunch of stuff. Sunglasses, Mac Within, Mac Lessons, all this kind of stuff. The, the, he keeps sell, reselling you the same old stuff from 20 years ago. And every time he speaks, it's an ad. Buy this. Don't forget the hidden colors. Even when he was uh, roasting Umar, he said, look at the uh, herpes sore on his lip. Go check out hidden colors, too. I mean, Tariq is always selling you something, though. Which takes away from whatever it is he's supposed to be about. And the truth is, he even tells you what he's not about. He tells you he's not a black leader. That's not what he wants to do. But he won't tell you that he's just an entertainer who went to Hollywood to make it big. But he didn't make it big, so this is what he does. They abuse the black people in the hopes of the black people. Why he gets paid and black people get nothing. Umar Johnson is the same thing. Except he didn't go to Hollywood. But I'm sure if he could go to Hollywood, he would. I mean, technically, he's doing a big act anyways. So, you know, all this is uh, good for YouTube views. Because I watched his live feed. I think this is his first YouTube live one. I don't know. The first one I caught anyways. And I saw that there were 4, over 4,500 people watching. I mean... Yeah, that's, those are big numbers and you know people are there for the controversy not for uh, any knowledge that Tariq kicks because like I said these guys who have the money even though I'm sure he doesn't you know he's just hanging on there in his, in his uh, world but these type of guys what they do is they never tell you how to get what they got that's what they never do Instead, they keep trying to tell you how, how to give what you got to them. That's what they're trying to tell you. So, this is the prime problem I have with these guys. Tariq makes sure he says he's not a uh, leader because he doesn't want the responsibility. But yet, he keeps going on these TV shows as if he is a leader. As if he's speaking for, for us. And then you, you, you call him on it. Then his people or him will say, hey, he's smart. He's trying to make sure he's not a target. Yeah, you can be smart like that, but you can't be talking like you're a so-called leader. Then you got a white mother-in-law, her, her white family. I mean, that doesn't make any sense, man. Well, it does if you're a, a coon house nigga and a liar. It makes a whole lot of sense. But uh, if you're trying to be pro-black, if you're not putting money in people's hands, his right-hand man is an African, that Ola guy. I mean, come on, man. How's that working for us? That's supposed to be some authentic uh, badge or something happening to African. That's not putting money in our hands. That's putting money in his hands. And if the money is anything like you pay those girls on that radio show, $85 a week, then shit, you might as well say you ain't putting money in nobody's hands. Shit. Can't make, you can't live off of $85 a week in Alabama. And you damn sure can't live off $85 a week in Los Angeles. So, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and I don't think it shows big enough for anybody to get any kind of credits off of. I mean, you could technically, I don't know if he even broadcasts from a real radio station. I think it's just on YouTube and other internet outlets. You could basically do that on your own. I mean, you could see on that show, that radioism show, that's all just entertainment. Which shows his true nature. He's just the entertainer wanting money. And doing what uh, whites have always done. Pimping black people. Selling them a dream. You roll with us. We get money. See, watch out for people who say that us and we. And then if you don't see none of that us and we in your, your hand or in your bank account. You know they're full of shit. You know? It's just like those people who like sports teams. Football teams. You hear them talking about, oh man, we lost. But we're going to get this guy, we're going to get that guy. I'm, I'm, uh, people like me always say, who's the we? I mean, why do you keep talking like this? You're not a part of that. 
You're just a fan. If you're a part of the we, the we gets the check. The you gets the watch. That's, that's what it is. So, I, I mean, I really don't understand that. If you got to buy a ticket to watch a live game, you're not a part of the we. Bottom line. So stop that. It's just like uh, Tariq's Hidden Colors 1804. You know, it's documentaries are cheap. I think I explained this before in another video. They're cheap to make, especially his. Because most of it is comprised. I mean, he did a little something more at the 1804 with the paintings and some reenactments. But I think he did that because, obviously, the Haitian Revolution. There's no footage to show. So you kind of had to reenact and uh, have reenactments and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, that, that's something he had to do. So, I mean, you got to understand, these guys are all fraudulent. They're all, uh, as they used to say in the 70s, they're jive turkeys. That's what they are. And I guess this is the signal that Umar Johnson is almost done. So Tariq Nasheed is taking, you know, he's like, fuck this. I don't want this man. He even said it. He didn't say it directly, but he said, hey, I don't want people messing up the brand that I created and all that kind of stuff. In other words, you don't want people fucking with the money. If Umar is going down on his own for fucking up, then you can go down on his own. That's that's what Tariq Nasheed is basically saying. I mean, and that's why he's uh, come out with the videos he, he came out with. So if anybody questions him on it, he can say, Umar is the fraud. I'm not the fraud. When you give me your money, uh, <laughs> things get done. So, you know, that's what he's trying to say. Uh, but you shouldn't have to give the man any money. On top of that, on the YouTube, I saw briefly that the man made $150. I'm sure he must have made more. But when I caught it, it was $150. In case you're wondering, I'm out in the car and it's cold. And I'm wiping my nose for people who are sensitive like that. But, um, Umar, I mean, Tariq Nasheed pocketed at least $150 that night. That's why they keep going live. Apparently, that's what somebody told me. Apparently, that's true. And I'm like, damn, are people fucking prostitutes or something? Why are you giving a millionaire money to do what? To keep living a good lifestyle? I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense. But that's the way people are programmed, man. People who don't need they give people who do need they don't give they say get a job uh get your shit up it, it, it's just weird that now you see why people don't go anywhere churches you give money to they don't need they want <laughs> but they don't do anything though churches have way more than enough money to do what needs to be done for the community so-called community but it doesn't get done why? Because that's, I mean, how long does that have to take before you realize that's not their objective? Their objective is to get paid and to live well, buy homes, buy Cadillacs, because historically that's the car they buy, Cadillacs. And you see Tariq Nashi with the Escalade, you know, black people like the Cadillacs. Uh, but, you know, all you do when you get these guys money is you just give them a lifestyle for what because you like the way they speak I mean come on it's about what they produce like I keep saying see I don't beg for money I ask for money I don't get much but if I did have what these other people got you would see and feel something being done you know that Yvette not Carnell that's another one that's been set up with fake beefs so she can run on her own she's a homosexual People would just pour money in her. But see, somebody says she's a Harvard grad. You know, you know what that's all about. They say she admitted she was a lesbian for people who uh, <laughs> say I'm slandering people. So, you know, don't don't even go there with that. But they keep pouring money in these people. That's why they, they do this. It's like the church, man. They keep going live. Saw that or all these people, they go live every damn night. At least Yvette Carnell doesn't go live every night, but she will pocket about 500 a night from going live saw netter he's so fucking pitiful he's like doing a telethon i know we can reach this amount it's like he has a quota he has to have let me try and grab at least 200 a night from going live i mean this is you know this is insane 
you know? But it goes to show, you look at these guys, the more money they have, the more money they get from you. Which I find pretty weird, but, you know, that's the way black people choose to live their lives, and that's why black people as a group are in the rut that we are in. Yes, there are individuals with a whole lot of means, but most of these people are self-centered, stingy, and greedy. And believe me, I know more than a few. I mean, I don't believe in giving uh, money to people to help them or giving stuff away because, um, you know, rich people do that just to make themselves look good. I believe in building up so that people can roll on their own. And, uh, and again, I'm not uh, one of those people who believes that all people uh, must be saved or, or should be saved because I already know there are people who cannot be saved. Because there are people whose minds aren't right. People who are drug addicts. People who are strippers, hoes, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, gang members. People who choose to drop out of uh, high school. And do drugs and do crime. I mean, those people... It's going to be hard for them to be reformed. I mean, if you've been reduced to selling your body and all that kind of stuff in the streets. You can be reformed if you're determined to. But, I mean, you went about as low as you can go. So it's kind of hard to reform. But um, you got to help the right ones, not anyone. And only black Americans, too. Because we're the ones, we're in our country, why should we, should we be uh, last? That doesn't make any sense. But as you can see, <clears throat> Tariq Nasheed, people like him, they're not trying to uh, do anything for black Americans. They're not trying to do anything for black people. Umar Johnson... You know, he's like a vagabond. You know, he's just a weird dude, man. And we haven't seen any lectures from the guy since he announced he was going to Japan and places that he claimed that uh, black people requested him to go to, which I find pretty odd. He keeps claiming he goes there on his own dime and all that kind of stuff. If that's the case, you go to places where they need you. Matter of fact, what the fuck do they need you for anyways? That's the bigger question. I mean... Who calls on Umar Johnson is just for entertainment, really, just to have a venue. I mean, who's going to call on this guy to say, hey, Umar Johnson, we need you in Japan. We need you in this country. Like he's a superhero coming to the rescue. I mean, the man, the man is not doing anything for anybody but talking and talking and talking. I mean, again, it's all about money because that's what he always asks. You know, he has his address memorize I mean <laughs> when it comes to that money but he keeps lowering the funds I already explained it in another video it's like they're trying to get out Boyce Watkins man I, I should find that TR I, I, can, I don't think I could find it but because I didn't host that show I was just commenting on somebody else's show and uh, I'm going to get into that not right now but I'm going to get into that uh because he's a slick guy. See, he's actually educated. Matter of fact, I'll save you for the, the, for the uh, Boyce, Boyce Watkins one. Uh, but they're all high-level scammers. See, the thing is, once they figure out a method to get black people to uh, come out of their pocket and start hitting them off with 100, 200, senior vet Carnell get 500, uh, Sarnetta said he got somebody donated 400 to him. These must be Freemason built-in fan bases or something because if, like, like some people say, man, if a black man on the street came up to you, not a bummy-looking drug addict, because we're seeing all these type of people all over the place now begging for money, but if somebody came up to you and said, listen, I got a cause, I need this, I need that first thing black people gonna do is say hey man I'm late for work I'm about to miss my train uh, or you know give me some literature I'll think it over you know anything to get away it's just like with me I ask for donations people make excuses why because I don't have the name of a Tariq Nasheed or the name of a Umar Johnson that's why see people want to be a part of something that's big and popular to say hey I'm down with that. You saw that video with Sarnetta and me. The man asked, did you donate? I said, not to you. Then he said, shut the fuck up then. 
I mean, come on, people. <laughs> I mean, uh, what more proof do you need that that's all it's about? It's about the money. Now, to the people who did donate, why don't you ask the man for a printout on what the hell you're doing? Him showing a bank account, the money being deposited in his bank account, that doesn't mean a damn thing. Now, show us, show us the withdrawals or the transfers. Show us what you've done with the money. We know you're getting the damn money, but what are you doing with the money? That's what you need to show us. But it goes to show, man, it's, it's, it's when things are popular, people want to be involved in it. That includes gangs. If you are a gang of five people and say we're the uh, the ass whoopers, you know, that's that's the name of the gang. Come with us, get money. People are going to be like, man, it's only five of you, man. You ain't getting no money. But if you grow to a hundred or more and your name is around then people who are into that kind of thing, they're going to say, hey, yeah, I need to be. I'm down with them. Why? Because they got a good name. That's why Bloods and Crips spread across the country. And people are like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a crip. I'm a blood. Because they want to feel a part of something bigger and more important than themselves. Same thing with Islam. Hebrew Israelites, all these uh, type of groups. People want to be a part of something larger than themselves, more important than themselves. So they'll give money. This is why Tariq Nashi gets money. Because you can at least see his hidden colors. It I told you it affected some people. But again, it's all business venture. He keeps all the profit. So, so the only thing you're getting out of it is to say, hey, I donated. Okay. Run the credits on each uh, hidden colors to the people who donated. That's, what, that's the least you could do. But he probably won't even do that. But he shouldn't have any more hidden colors because he really ran out of things to talk about, to be honest with you. Because you talk about anything else, it's no longer about hidden colors. It's about something else. Uh, but this is why people like me can't get donations because my name is not out there like that. People don't know me. People and people will make a whole lot of excuses to say, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're going to be doing with the money. But when it comes to Sarnetta, you know what he's doing with the money. The man is <laughs> buying S-Class Benzes and he told you, so what? I got a Benz. You damn right I got one. What do you, uh, S Class is an executive vehicle. It's not for people like him. You want that to show off. He, he's going around with pimp suits with furs and shit on, Dominican outfits, ugly ass gators, all these kind of things. This is, these are the things that Negroes in the ghetto buy because they just want to look good while in the ghetto. But all this money he wasted, he probably could have bought a house somewhere. You know? But. This is how it is, man. These people waste money when you give them money. And you see them, and they the thing is, they throw it in your face on video. They, this, they show you what they're doing. They tell you what they're about to do. And you still feed them. It's like you're saying, yeah, Sarnet, I like the way you look in that fur pimp uh, outfit. Here's another $100. Go get another one. I mean, come on, man. It's, it's insane. But then you have people who are sincere. Yeah, people may not beg the way these people beg, but you shouldn't have to beg to get the shit. You know? And the, unfortunately, with people like me, it'll take us some time to accumulate uh, donations to the point <laughs> that by the time we get enough to do something, people will be like, oh, I forgot what you were supposed to be doing. You know? But then we're going to be held to the fire a lot more because people are going to say, oh, you said you were going to do something. Let's see it. But you will see something immediately from me. But these others, you see what you see. Tariq Nashi lives his lifestyle. Sarnetta lives the ghetto lifestyle. Umar Johnson, I don't know what the hell he's doing with the money, but I guess he plans on going to Africa to, to live, which uh, means everybody's been had. And we'll see what that hearing uh, brings. But I have a feeling it's a whole bunch of bullshit. This is all theatrics. This is all uh, about getting your money. And uh, so Tariq Nasheed is covering his ass. That's what he's doing. This is what guys like him do. You know, everything is good in the beginning. He says he bought Umar out. Uh, Saad Nutter says he bought Umar out. 
but nobody wants to mention Dar. Uh, what was his name? Dawa Israel. Nobody wants to mention him by name. Instead, Tariq just said some public access show in Chicago. You see, because they don't want to mention other people's name. You know, because they want the glory for themselves. So they steal people's knowledge, steal people's lines, steal people's uh, other shit. And, and they attribute, attribute it to themselves. That's what they do. So, you know, these, these guys are something else, man. But, you know, he's just covering his ass right now. And Umar Johnson, I guess he's going to go down unless he's slick enough to, to, to survive it. But we'll see what happens, man. We don't even know where the guy is. We don't even know where his base of operations is. But uh, if he's out of the country, you know, he doesn't even have to come back, really. I mean, if you got a P.O. box, you could say you didn't get the mail, but he put it out there. But we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, I don't really, really care what happens. It's about the school no matter what happens. License or not, PhD or not, he said he wanted the money to build a school, build a school.